Hi everybody, I hope you are all well. Didn't I say that I thought it would be three weeks before I would be back with you? And it was three weeks exactly. My estimations are getting better this year. <laughs> but funnily enough, um, it's only taken me two weeks to read um, the book I'm here to review, but it's taken three weeks for me to get back to you because I read for a week, I had a week off, and then I've read for a week again because last week I came down with a horrible horrible cold bug um yeah it wasn't pretty at all it was it was either a nasty cold bug that I came down with or it was a standard one but because I hadn't had a cold in like three years nearly um it just it hit me like a train it was it was ridiculous and um i did test myself for covid and it wasn't that and my and the next day uh, after i did that initial test my sinuses went crazy and i was like yes sinus pain in covid is not <laughs> consistent but because my sinus pain was all around here and my eyes i couldn't read i just couldn't focus on on the page whatsoever so that forced me to take um time off because uh, yeah I, it was I came down on the bank holiday Monday the the early bank holiday here in the UK I was then off work for the following three days then Friday I was back at uh, back at work again um still had it but I was I was a lot lot better my sinus pain had gone thank god at that point um and then I took the weekend off as well because I was a bit like you know fully get out of your system and on the Sunday anyway it was my mum dad's uh wedding anniversary so family was celebrating with them um so yeah it was so that was a that was kind of a full-on week anyway so I did technically I did read this book in two weeks but I had to spread it over three because I fell ill um but I don't mind that but I'm getting better with my estimates aren't I compared to what I have been so far this year and I think uh, you know work calming down and everything like that has really really greatly helped that situation and so yeah I I delved into the book I am here to review, which is The Foresight Saga, Volume 1 by John Galsworthy. Now, I have not read um, any of John's writing before, so I didn't know what I was going into. Just to give you, a, you know, an, some info, if you haven't seen before, um, I did a video with my sister where we talked about the Foresight Saga drama, which I'm going to talk about here, not as in-depth as that video, obviously, because that was a whole thing that that video was dedicated to, but I will link that in the description below if you want to view it. Um, so when the Foresight Saga drama came out in 2002, my sister fell head over heels in love with it um but i wasn't really that interested in it i mean i was like like so so but i was i was three years younger she was the perfect kind of target audience for well i say target audience i mean period dramas in the early 2000s especially were very much for um i suppose older people in a way but they but this drama particularly um really targeted kind of a younger audience as in like probably like the 18 upwards was where they were really targeting and my sister at that time was what how old was she she um yeah she was she was 19 so it it, it fit perfectly for her um so i was thinking it was it, she was it was different time than that but oh look, my brain my brain's not wanting to work today i i've just filmed my um next five reads video and you'll see in that video my brain is just not wanting to function whatsoever because i was completely misreading words and stuff so yeah you'll see where my brain was at um anyway uh yes yeah, so she yeah she was 19 and so i was 16 and i just i just wasn't that into it but you know i i was i did like period dramas it was just that drama i think because i had you know um i was doing like my gcse uh, well no no i'd have finished my gcse i was going to my a levels and i had other things on my mind and so i just didn't really go with it as it were and then years and years later i came across it again and my sister was like oh my god you've got to watch it you've got to watch it um and i watched it and i fell absolutely head over heels in love with it 
absolutely i then as soon as i finished watching the drama i got the soundtrack i was hunting various um dramatizations of like radio play dramatizations of this story and it just so happens that there was a new drama uh, radio drama coming out um or it just come out uh of it and i was like oh my god that's brilliant um so i and i and i love the most recent uh bbc radio dramatization of it which i will talk about in a bit um so yeah so that's my history with the full size saga and so i I knew the story, but I never read the book. I didn't know the differences between the drama and the book. I didn't know how well it had been adapted and such. So I was like, okay. Now, the Full Size Saga is massive. I thought there was only two volumes of the Full Size Saga. No, if you look on the back of the book, it tells you there are three volumes. This is volume one, which covers three books and one short story wedged between book one and two. This collection of volume one is 906 pages long. So there is a lot going on in this. And just so you're aware, if you have seen the 2002 or, or you want to see the 2002 um, drama, the full size saga, that both series combined, because it was shown over two series, um, covers the entirety of this first volume. So if you just want to read what is covered in that drama, get volume one only. Okay, um, so yeah, so I kind of went into this, I wouldn't say with the expectation being very high because I didn't know any of John's writing whatsoever. Um, I kind of just went into this going, okay, let's just, just, just see, test the waters, see how we go. And I will admit that when it first kicked off, I was a bit like, okay, this feels a bit, mm, okay, a bit clunky, a little... Uh, it could be a smooth ride, but as you read through it, you can see his writing improving. You can see that he is, at, at the very beginning, because the foresights, there are a lot of people. Oh, sorry, I've just realised I've gone like seven minutes and I haven't even told you what the story is about. I am so bad at this. I tell you, my brain today, it's just all over the place. Um, so the Foresight Saga follows the Foresight family. There are over multiple generations. It spans um, at least 50 years. Um, so, uh, yeah, actually, if you include the later volumes, it's probably more about 70 years of a family so there's a lot going on <laughs> so um this book covers about uh 30 maybe 35 years of the family um so yeah so it's there's a lot in there and there's a lot of family members. We have got multiple generations and each of those generations have multiple children who have children. Yeah, it, it, it carries on through the line, through this family over these years. So there's a lot going on. And unfortunately, what John does, which is, I get why he has to do it, but at the same time, it really irked me. And that's what made me feel, this is clunky, this is not quite what I expected, at the, especially at the beginning, is that he feels he has to cram in so much. He will, like, say, for example, there's a character in this who goes to, um, he enlists and goes, uh, becomes a soldier in the, the Boer War. Um, and it, 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 he says, like, I'm not, I don't want to give too much detail because obviously spoilers, I'm not going to say who the character is or anything, but literally there is like a sentence that says X character, <laughs> I was just about to say the name, and I was like, oh no, 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 don't. I managed to, my brain hasn't gotten to me that, and that answers. So X character uh, had um, been away uh, fighting in the war for quite some time. He had been injured, inval invalided home, and was cared for by his wife. Over time, he had gained his strength and was now looking into a new career as a farmer. That's one sentence. And it's like, 
that is a shitload of story for that character. And the drama, I will talk about this more in a minute, but the drama, then what they've done is that they have split that up into multiple scenes. They've expanded on it. They've given it dialogue. They've given it emotion. They've given it real robustness that it needs. But John feels like, especially because there's so many characters in flicking back, da, 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 da. it just feels like he is... He's the outsider. He's the one who is at the party, you know, looking over over wine glasses, like, going, oh, do you see what's going on? Uh, he's, yeah, he's very much that character, the outside character. But he feels like he has to rush through. And it's like, no, 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 John, just, just slow it down. Just expand on it. Tell me more about that emotion. Tell me the psychological stuff. Tell me the in-depth of it. Um, so he, you do find you have this mass amount of description and little dialogue. But then as the, you go into the second book, and just FYI, I think the, the time difference in the, actually publishing the first, the second book was something of like, I think it was several years. You can see he's gone, right, okay, now... I had I had to cover everyone in the first book. Now I want to cover only certain individuals, and I'll make reference to the third, you know, to other characters throughout the second book. And then the third book, I can expand more on them, and you know, to kind of switch it around. And so when you get to the point of the third book, he suddenly has his his pages where he's doing all of this description suddenly turns into this like poetic fluidity that I'm like, damn, that is, that is, if only he had that at the very beginning, I think that would, that would have just made this just really a gorgeous read throughout. I'm not saying that, that you know, it wasn't a, a good read in the first book. It was a good read. I read, you know my rule about how I will read 100 pages and I'll see how I go. I got through 906 pages in two weeks of reading. Clearly, I found it a really good, beautiful read. Um, but yeah, I just kind of feel like, oh, if only his writing quality in the third book was like how it was in the first book, that would have made it so much better better but you know it is what it is and uh, I've said this multiple times that you know when I, when I say that you can tell the first a first book is a first book that is not a bad thing it just means that, that there is um, the room for improvement and when you see a writer develop their writing as as you're going along with it with you know their catalogue of, of um of work it's wonderful it's I, I love it i absolutely love seeing a writer progress um it's just it's it's a wonderful thing to 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 witness uh on the page i think it's glorious absolutely glorious and john is one of those writers um i don't know i, I did i did a little bit of wikipedia kind of research a week or so ago when I was feeling a bit better after my cold um, about John but I didn't really look at his other books and such so I don't know how well established an author he was before he wrote the fourth size saga um, or if he was at all um, so yeah I really should have done that before this video but I only finished this book like an hour or two uh, an hour and a half ago um, so you know <laughs> Didn't have time. I had to get ready for the day, put, turn on the camera, film this and film my announcement video. Um, so, yeah, so I would like to to delve a little bit more into John's um, uh, biography, basically, and find out more about him. But it's very interesting. There's some The thing that I read on Wikipedia that just stuck with me was how his wife um, was actually married to his cousin, and he, they basically, the two of them had an affair uh, behind his cousin's back. The cousin found out, broke off the marriage. He then married this woman who he had been having this uh, affair with behind his cousin's back. And then as soon as they were married, it was like, right, it just wasn't the same. And he ended up having what is described on Wikipedia as having a mother-son relationship for the rest of their lives and they had separate rooms and everything and he cared for the dogs more than he cared for her kind of thing and it was like 
wow. And the fact that we got this woman caught between two cousins, and when you read the Volsite saga, it's like, ooh, okay. Mm, just saying, just saying. <laughs> it's just like, I think we know where the inspiration there happened. Um, which I, I, I just can't help but kind of love that. <laughs> I know it's very bad of me to, to do that, but you know, it's the way I am. Um, but, but yeah, I just, I found that really fascinating. And if that was the inspiration for Irene, um, jo Jolien and, and Soames' story, then yeah. That is very interesting. I didn't actually compare when the dates of their relationship and their marriage to um, the publication of the Forsyth Saga. So mm, I might need to look into that. Um, yeah, I, I I found this really interesting read. It's, it is well paced. But as I said at the, at the beginning, it feels a bit frantic. It feels a bit like you're being a little overloaded but and what he does also is that he doesn't necessarily write in linear order so at the beginning we are met we meet June who is uh, she's this youthful bright you know girl who is it feels like she's going to take on the world and she's you know she's reached adulthood and she's just gotten engaged and it's her engagement party and we meet Soames and his wife Irene and we can tell that there's something not good about their relationship and when they get home and we see them at their home you realize the truth and then it jumps back to the beginning of their story and tells the, uh, the story of how they met and courtship and all of that lot um so he does this where he, he plonks you in a situation and then you've got to jump back to be able to understand why that's they reacted the way they reacted and such um so yes yeah, so there's a bit, lot of bouncing about it's very frantic at the beginning but then it as i said it it transforms i think that's the best way to describe it into this beautiful poetic fluidity to it where characters have got so much depth and not that i'm saying that they don't have depth in the in the beginning but there's more of an emphasis on the characters emotions and where their mindset is to understand why they do what they do next and that is very important for a certain character called john not going to give any spoilers who john is how the connections and all that lot but especially the end of the third book i was like yes john yes yes take back control you know i was rooting for him and i love him so so much um there is a character who well two characters but one in particular who i absolutely hate with a passion um she's horrible she's she's just she's a terrible terrible character and unfortunately in volume two and onwards because of the radio play that i know very well which covers all three volumes of the full size saga she kind of becomes quite a lead character and i'm like oh but i hate her so much so i feel like right now i don't want to explore the second or third volume of the full size saga not for john's writing or anything it's just because she is becoming the lead character and i can't stand the woman uh, I call a woman, no, girl, she is a girl, she is so, she's a spoiled little brat, and she's such a bitch, and I hate her, so I'm like, you know what, I need to, I need to put a, put a bit of a gap between now and the next time I might want to explore the Foresight Saga Volume 2, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not fond of her whatsoever. Um, but again, I'm not going to give any spoilers as to, um, who that is. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a very quick reading for you. Um, so this is chapter 10 of the first book, uh, of the Forsyth Saga. And it kind of gives some information about, um, the Forsyth family and such and the 
the top of the family is a guy called Jolian, uh, and he has a son, is Jolian Jr., um, or Young Jolian, as he is known. And Young Jolian has kind of become the black sheep of the family because of a situation to do with his marriage. And so um, he's kind of been cast out, and this is old Jolian um, possibly trying, to, thinking about his relationship with his son and what could happen um, going forward. So, yeah. So, it's called Diagnosis of a False Sight. I really do like the titles. They're very, they're very, very good chapter titles, I must say. It is in the nature of a false sight to be ignorant that he is a false sight. The young Jolian was well aware of being one. He had not known it till after the decisive step which had made him an outcast. Since then, the knowledge had been with him continually. He felt it throughout his alliance, without, uh, throughout all of his dealings with his second wife, who was empathetically not a foresight. He knew that if he had not possessed in great measure the eye for what he wanted, the tendency to hold on to it and the sense of the folly of wasting that for which he had given so big a price, in other words, the sense of property, he could never have retained her, perhaps never would have desired to retain her, with him through all the financial troubles, slights and misconstructions of those 15 years. Never had never have induced her to marry him on the death of his first wife, never have lived it all through and come up as it were that thin but smiling. He was one of those men who seated cross-legged like Chinese idols in the cage of their own hearts are even smiling at themselves a doubting smile. Not that this smile so intimate and eternal interfered with his actions, which, like his chin and his temperament, were quite a peculiar blend of softness and determination. He was conscious, too, of being a foresight in his work, that painting of watercolours to which he devoted so much energy, always with an eye on himself, as though he could not take so unpractical a pursuit quite seriously, and always with a certain queer uneasiness that he did not make more money on it. It was then his this consciousness of what it meant to be a foresight that made him receive the following letter from old Jolian with a mixture of sympathy and disgust. My dear Joe, the dad's handwriting had altered very little in the 30 odd years that he remembered it. We have been here now a fortnight and have had good weather on the whole. The air is bracing, but my liver is out of order and I shall be glad enough to get back to town. I cannot say much for June. Oh, sorry, I've got to say June is young jo Jolian's daughter from his first marriage. Um, but when the marriage broke down and young Jolian got cast out, June went to live with old Jolian. So the granddad has raised the granddaughter um, like his own. So I cannot say much of June. Her health and spirits are very indifferent and I don't see what uh, what. Uh, what is to come of it. She says nothing, but it's clear that she is harping on this engagement, which is an engagement and no, en <laughs> which is an engagement and no engagement and goodness knows what. <laughs> I have grave doubts whether she ought to be allowed to return to London in this present state of affairs, but she is so self-willed that she might take it into her head to come up at any moment. The fact is someone ought to speak to Bassini got to say as well, Bassini is the man that June is engaged to. Uh, so the fact is someone ought to speak to Bassini and discern what he means. I'm afraid of this myself, for I should certainly wrap him over the knuckles, but I thought that you, knowing him at the club, might put in a word and get in a, cer a certain what is to follow, a, a what, the fo what the fellow is about. <laughs> I tell you today, my brain's not in a good place. You will, of course, in no way commit Jean. I shall be glad to hear from you in the course of a few days whether you have succeeded in gaining any information. The situation is very distressing to me. I worry about it at night. With my love to Jolly and Holly, I am your 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 affectionate father, Jolian Forsyth. So Jolly and Holly are um, young Jolian's children with his second wife. 
Um, so yeah, Jolly is the nickname for Jolian. Who's uh, you know they're all three, all three of them are called Jolian. So um, yes, yeah, so he gets referred affectionately as Jolly. Young Jolian pondered this letter so long and seriously that his wife noticed his preoccupation and asked him what was the matter. He replied, nothing. It was a fixed principle with him never to allude to Jean. She might take alarm. He did not know what she might think. He hastened, therefore, to banish from, from his manner all traces of absorption. But in, in this, he was about as successful as a father would have been, for he would inherit all, all of old Jolian's transparency and matter of domestic finesse, and young Mrs. Jolian, busying herself over the affairs of the house, went about with the tightening lips, st stealing at him unfathomable looks. He started for the club in the afternoon with a letter in his pocket and without having made up his mind. So that's only two pages of the 900 page saga of the first volume of the Foresight Saga. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of interweaving, there's a lot of connections and all this lot. Um, but I especially do love how John, um, he very much gives every character their own space when when he has the opportunity to as I said the first volume is quite frantic but he gives them his space he has so much respect for um every character even the book even the bad bad people um the bad guys and gals um he gives them space to breathe he gives them weight he gives them reality he he's not afraid to cover a variety of different things now um i will flag that uh, rape is included in this first volume um the way that it is done obviously relates to the time in which the book was written and it's yeah um it's not how do I say this? It's not like horrifically graphic or anything. It's implied that it's happened, um, but I just wanted to flag it in case anybody is sensitive to anything like that. Um, it, it's one occurrence, so I just want to clarify, and I say that because obviously there is historical um, fiction writers who use it a lot, um, not naming any names, but you know, if you follow my channel, you might know who I'm talking about. Yes, Laura and Sarah will know exactly who I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, it, but I wanted to flag it just in case anybody is sensitive to anything like that. There, there is a rape that occurs. Um, but yes, but I can show you that it's one occurrence only. That's it. Um, it is, it's, yeah, I do love the Foresight Saga. There is something about it, and I love especially his, John's love and respect for the character of Irene. And given what I know about his personal life, it kind of makes sense that he is the way he is about Irene in the writing. So, yeah, but I'm not going to uh, spoil, so... <laughs> Let's end this review there. So, my usual questions. Um, would I read this again? Yes, I definitely would. I think that you, you I would really um, read it kind of like how I am right now, where I'm not frantically busy with work and everything, and I have more time to read and such, because um, there's a lot of information you've got to take in through the Forsyth Saga. Uh, and so I'm very, very glad that I had... I picked this at this time to read um so definitely i'd read it again in these kind of it might even become like a classic summer read for me i don't know we'll just have to see um would i recommend this to anyone yes i would but i would flag how the first book is quite frantic so it can feel a bit oh, a bit all over the place um but yes definitely um would recommend it to anyone uh would i read any more of john's work yeah i definitely would um as i said you could see his writing improve and i am so here for that i definitely have a look at the rest of of uh, the books that he has published and quite possibly in the future look for the second volume of the foresight saga but as i said it follows 
and main character main character it follows is somebody who I hate so I'm like yeah it's yeah that's gonna be a toughie but there we go <laughs> so when it comes to adaptations as I said the 2002 drama of the Forsyth Saga is exquisite it is so well adapted I I cannot I, I can't I can't take it in it is so well done everything that is implied is in, in the book is implied here as i said there are things like john will cover somebody's story in a whole massive part of their story in like one sentence the drama has, has taken that that sentence broken it down given it body given it conversation given it full heart and emotions and played it out in a stunning way on on the screen and i just i love that so much i just oh and it's in linear order as well so you don't have the jumping back and forth and all that lot yay um all the cast is absolutely brilliant but i want to give a major major shout out to rupert graves he is astonishing in this he's one of the best things i have ever seen him do oh my god he is amazing as the young jolian there he is. oh no it's the wrong side there he is <laughs> It's because I was looking at it on my laptop and I got muddled up with my eyes. So there he is. Oh my God, he is so good. You can get the drum. Uh, as I said, it's two series and the first volume entirely covers this the drama collection of both series so you can buy the soundtrack as well which i listen to often which i absolutely love absolutely love it it's it's so good a score and when it comes to radio dramas you have got uh the original radio drama i think it's from 1980s this or was it 60s hang on let's open it up and take a look i should have checked this before but oh well oh no it was Oh, is it 1990? Oh, hang on. I'm so well prepared, aren't I? <laughs> oh, no, it was 1990. Um, it was broadcast. So, yeah, so you have this original 1990s one. Or you have the more recent one. Um, the cover of this, this is obviously when it first came out on CD. Yes, I've got it on CD. I love collecting, like, dramas on cd and such is the way i am but the cover has changed the last time i looked on audible it was like this cream background with a drawing of a of a white house on it um i will include it in the description below i and we'll see if the cover's changed again but i this is the one i adore i absolutely love this one it's from 2017 this one is more very you can tell it's like classically trained actors who are that's not a bad thing whatsoever but it feels very only a niche market is going to listen to this one whereas this one is very universal very human um a lot a lot more closer to reality if that's what i want to say i don't but not that i'm saying this isn't real but it just kind of feels like this is very classic kind of only a certain niche market would like this and this one is universal so yeah and this one is actually narrated by the character who i can't stand so this is why i'm like so when she narrates throughout the various you know the first three books that um that this volume one covers and then she reveals herself who she is it's like oh it's a nice thing yeah, yeah yeah and then she becomes the main character and i'm like oh my god so that's what's making me fear kind of reading the second volume because i'm like oh god she's going to become main character and i don't like that but this drama is really really good i much prefer this one over over the original 1991 um but yeah i will include um links to both of them on audible um i will include the trailer link for this and i will also include the link in the description to the video i did with my sister where we talk about the drama in depth so that one's got a load of spoilers in it because obviously we're talking in depth about various things um but yes just if you want to uh, to watch that it is full of spoilers so there we go i think i'm done so i hope you enjoyed this video have you read this book i'd love to know what you think leave me a comment in the comments box below give me a thumbs up thumbs down it's highly to you that side and uh my next video will announce my next five reads which i'm very excited for so yeah 
I hope you enjoyed and I will see you when I have finished reading the first of book out of the five uh, in my next video. All right, guys. Bye.